Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. The analyst desk is still reeling from the result of that previous game, but the show must go on, and we will be getting into the rematch of Edward Gaming versus Samsung White. This was the first match of the Taipei group stage, so it's appropriate that it is also our last, as we said, Samsung White versus China's Edward Gaming. The last time these teams met, it took 43 minutes for Samsung White to win the game. I would dare say it took them 20... It took them 15, 25. 15 minutes longer than it should have. Care to expand free? Yeah, so the first 25 minutes was all Samsung White all the time, and it was like, wow, here's the team we've been hyping up the whole time against this other great team of Edward Gaming, and man, did they destroy them in 25 minutes. And then for 18 minutes, they kind of waited around, and Imp did some weird, crazy things in Tristana, and eventually they closed out the game. But the early game, I mean, we've talked about it, it's, it's the key strength of Samsung White. I just think they should close them out a little bit faster afterwards. Yeah, I think so too. I've got an interesting stat for you guys. Samsung White have only given up four dragons and four towers in five games that they have played. The interesting thing is, four of those towers was in game one against EDG, meaning they've not dropped one oh the next oh four. Oh <laughs> and of those okay. four dragons, <laughs> we're done here. They've only <laughs> dropped two to the remaining four guests. So EDG have taken four towers and two dragons more than anybody else in this group. Seeing how they're playing, it makes me think that they're actually trying to perhaps win the whole tournament without dropping a single game. They want to go for like that ultimate, like, yeah, we're here. And we're SKT. Take it out. Yeah, exactly. See, but if, see if they can. SKT drop games. Crumbs, Three games? Not no, a champion's no, winter. <laughs> Crumbs, oh, yeah. the, person that, the person that's going to lead potentially on the side of Samsung White is going to be Dandy. On the other side, Clear Love. I want to talk about the two junglers in particular. I've loved Clear Love's uh, Rengar. We've not seen Dandy play Rengar this tournament. He doesn't need to. But what's your take on the two junglers? Give me some thoughts. I think that Clear Love really likes to play Jarvan more than anything. And he's one of the few junglers around the world that can make it work. And seeing them perform on it is really nice because obviously nobody else does it. Nobody else really knows how to the intricacies of the champion. But I'd like to see him gank more early. We saw the game that they first had when the group started, and he seemed very lackluster in the beginning of the game. Once the transition to team fights, he was doing a lot. But before that, he should be using his early power to basically abuse every other champion because Jarvan's early game is very strong so I'd like to see him do a repeat ma um, of the matchup again and just go for it that time. Dandy at World so far impressed you, let you down no. as expected Monty? Uh, as expected I think this guy is the best jungler in the world and he's been acting like it. The only one who can hold a candle to him in my opinion is Kakao. Kakao and the KT heroes are not here so uh, he's just been doing fantastic, and uh, you bring it up too, he's hiding something here. I know how good his Rengar is. Anybody who watches matches on OGN, who's watching regionals, knows that this guy can hard carry games, get double-digit kills and assists, get that double-double on a jungler, and I think he's just waiting to pull it out. I don't I think he's... Seems like he needs to need it, like show it off yet. Give anybody inf any information. I'm, however, looking forward to the first triple double in competitive play. I would love a ten <laughs> death game as well. Um, I think that would finally, you know, finalize him as one of the premier junglers in the world. Let's just get some closing thoughts from Crepo very quickly. Edward Gaming lost to AHQ earlier. If they lose this game, it will be in a rematch. How much does that weigh on Edward Gaming's minds, considering they were already the underdogs in this game? Yeah. I if they lose, then the, it depends on how they lose, right? If they get a somewhat close game, they have a somewhat good game. But if they lose again to poor decision-making, stalling out, not playing to their comp strengths, and just in general getting caught, their game earlier, they had they had maybe like two spells they had to watch out for. One of them was the hook, and they still got caught a couple of times, and they didn't take any measurements to fight that. If they don't have that presence of mind, then their quarterfinals will be really rough. Yeah, we'll have to see how that pans out. The players are busy setting up on stage, so we do need to talk just a little bit more. Samsung White, clear favorites. Is there anything everybody can do? Uh, I actually think the casters are ready for the next match, so let's throw it over to them as it's potentially the last game. Samsung White taking on Edward Gaming. The pros have high expectations, and most of the others are all agreeing, so let's see if they live up to the hype. I think Samsung White is living up to the hype, especially that bot lane, because they're crushing every single other bot lane. I honestly think Samsung White's gonna take worlds. The Pentakill to come in for him! Pentakill! They're like the whole new level. A complete shutout coming in for Samsung White. I just think they're just the time they're doing it, they're doing it very well. They're not going to kill me. These two games, I think they're going to be... 还是很还是很完美了，我觉得。
？我觉得失误是有啦，可是他们的失误都是并不会造成他们就是太大的损失，就是他们虽然失误，可是都是还有办法，就是在弥补回来。이제와의관계에서이기는했지만저희팀안에특유의그렇게쉽게이기지못한것같아가지고좀다음번엔더깔끔하게이기려고생각하고있어요在打 EDG 的时候吧 ，Imp 他们的 AD， 然后有几次不够紧，很容易被单抓掉。团战就是打得比较打得比较好放，对，就是有可能会被 EDG 抓到死。Everybody low, they all back away. They're gonna continue piling in. It's gonna be a big shutdown. There is Imp gets a kill. He goes down after in the retribution kill. Imp goes absolutely crazy, but luckily he took Name out with him. 거의예 100% 는나오지않았다생각해요 They do look like they play a little bit worse on stage, but I would put Samsung White as the best team of the world right now. Some strong words from Dyrus because they're going to be playing them in the next match in the quarterfinals. Of course, Samsung White will face TSM, but for now, it is all about EDG. Can they pick up a win and avoid? That tiebreaker for now. Let's check out the starting lineups. Over on the blue side, it is Sam Sung White from Korea's Champions. That means in the top lane, it is Looper, Dandy in the jungle, Pawn in the mid lane, Imp as the AD carry, and Mata as support. And of course, on the red side, it's China's Edward Gaming with Koro in the top lane, Clear Love in the jungle, Yu in mid, Name the AD carry, and FZZF on support. All right, this one is definitely highly anticipated. It was highly anticipated as the first game of groups, and it's going to be highly anticipated as the last game. As everybody said, Samsung White have been living up uh, to all of the praise. Edward Gaming have you know had a hard time, and I do want to touch on something that Crumb said, um, talking about Clear Love, because I, that interview that I saw after the first game for Samsung White that uh, Edward Gaming did, Clear Love said. Uh, I was nervous, and I played too passively. He agrees with Crumbs. He said, I'm going to gank more for my lanes early because we can't allow Samson White to snowball again because they just get out of control. Well, last time around, it was all about him getting caught out, and it was FCZF doing a lot of that work. So we're going to put a microscope on the, the supports for this game. This featured matchup, of course, is Mata versus FZZF. Yeah, I love both of these supports. They both are able to come up with huge individual plays while also both making a ton of the calls for their team. These are tacticians for their respective teams. Also, they're both extremely strong with vision control. Uh, one of the points, though, also in the interview was that uh, they didn't have the best mid-game vision control from EDG. And that is something um, that FCZF is going to have to work on. I have the numbers here. 29 more wards placed by Mata than were placed by FCZF, FZZF. And eight of those were pink wards. So Mata definitely living up to his name, controlling the vision game. There are some confounding factors. Of course, Samsung White were ahead the whole time, they could, so they had more map control and they had more disposable income to spend on those wards. But still... 29 more uh, to earn the vision for Samsung White to come out with those plays. I'm really excited to see what the loss in their previous game has done mm. to Edward Gaming here as well because this wasn't an expected result. We expected, and I think everyone realistically did, that this game was going to decide who was finishing first or second or whether we were going to have another uh -huh. tiebreaker between these two teams to play at the end of the day. Funnily enough, Samsung White are through in first whatever. Edward Gaming are fighting for a spot in the quarterfinals. Here. Yeah, actually, they don't want to go up against HQ again because li they literally just lost today already. The uh, extra game would definitely be something they want to avoid as soon as possible. Well, whether Dandy's hiding something on Rengar or not, we'll never find out in this matchup because it has been banned out. There's the Thresh ban. FCZF went huge on that one last time around. A Kassadin ban actually coming out from EDG this time around. Yeah, they did ban it against Pawn last time as yeah. well. So they're staying true. Same ban so far, actually. Yasuo and Kassadin both banned out last time. Do expect the Alistar as well, so that would be all three exactly the same for them. Well, to up down the TDG's band, but yes, they got the band down the two. Yeah, they picked the same though. Uh, sorry, band the same. Yasuo, Kassadin, Alice, the same as game number one. Leaves Maokai open, as was in game number one, but it was Edward Gaming that took it in their last encounter. This time, he's going over onto Looper. Hmm. And let's see about this rise. Edward Gaming have been uh, prioritizing it very heavily. But it hasn't been really a big game changer for them with 
Koro up in the bottom lane. So we'll see, because they uh, they have locked it in in the first round, along with the Kha'Zix. Clear Love, one of the things he did say, last time around, stealing away Kha'Zix was a very good move by Samsung White, so he doesn't want to let them do it again. EDG switching things up from the AHQ game, of course. Went for that poke, not going to go this time with that rise, and well, Kha'Zix may well play into it, but at the moment, Samsung White, how are they going to react? Will they lock in? That Janna for Mata, he's rubbing his hands, absolutely will, and Twitch for Imp will follow. So, you know, Janna definitely is really popular right now, but technically she has lost all the games today, I think, that she's been on. Mm. So let's see if Samsung can buck that trend. This is definitely a good combo for them and a good takeaway from Name. So one thing for Imp on that Twitch, if you think back to the Quarterfinals, semifinals, Samsung White versus Samsung Blue. They actually didn't run it as an assassin like you often would with the obviously the Blade of Rune King. It was more a case of we are all going to pile on and protect you and become that five man initiate. And that's kind of working out right now with the Maokai Janna. They definitely do have the tools to uh, create the very strong team fight with that Twitch towards the late game. Janna definitely a paramount for all the teams looking for disengage. And that's always good against Kha'Zix as well, both Janna and Maokai, as we saw in the last game. Kagwa Nami lane is extremely strong, though. And it's the first time that we're going to be seeing something newish from FCZF. Of course, Janna and Thresh being big picks for him. And that Nami coming out this time around. Let's see how this one all works out for them. Kogmore, of course, for Nami as well. For Samsung White then, they obviously don't have the ability to uh, hmm. counter pick that mid lane up for Pawn, so maybe they'll go something a little safer, or maybe not. I mean, Katarina we saw yesterday, don't think that's going to be a pick <laughs> here today though. Some, something tells me that it'll be something a little bit different to that Jarvan though for Dandy, with the bands and castles Whoa, going. No Lee Sin, huh? Is Jarvan and yeah. Fizz as well pick for Pawn. Some more interesting picks here from Samsung White. And another thing we've gathered from group stages, they've played so many different champions all they can play anything. at they can every anything. single position. Yeah. Exactly. They can switch it up every single game here. Now, the Fizz, the possibility of split pushing is always there for Fizz, but he's all about quick kills in uh, the mid game as well. So a Fizz plus Twitch gives you more possibilities of even picking off people later. A couple of different things that White could do with this team right now. They do have Jarvan to group people up as well if they wanted to get that spray and pray late game for the team fight oriented Twitch. That's two very different hovers for you. Zed or Ziggs. I mean, they start with the same letter, but they are far from being similar <laughs> types of champions. What's he going to go for? Well, it looks like he's going to try and bully the Fizz early, take that range champion, either Orion and Ziggs, both very good at that. Um, Ziggs also has the benefit that he can satchel charge backwards, and he's a little bit safer for the all-in from Fizz, even if you do have the Jarvan jungle coming for early ganks. Uh, we'll see how safely play you, uh, you plays this. Usually he does opt more for the farming and shies away from the the trades. If he plays too cautiously though and doesn't try and punish Pawn, uh, then a mid-game Fizz with decent CS is going to be a problem. Big pressured question marks on Name in this game. 0-3-1 against AHQ is not probably the record he was thinking he would be coming out with. Very much a different player, plays for his team rather than that flashy assassin jumping around everywhere which we've seen from him so far in these games. Well, yeah, it looks like this time around, he's looking to dive in here with Jarvan. Dandy yeah. and Pawn are gonna have a big target on Name's head. Locking in Kogma like that, you know, you do not have your own escape. Low mobility champion, sitting duck for Jarvan. Jarvan loves to go counter Kogma, and if you're stuck inside that cataclysm, it's uh, the fish actually shooting you inside the barrel in that case. And this is the game 
that normally has to step it up. This is the game where he has to go huge and, you know, actually push them through here and avoid that tiebreaker. Well, guys, before the game goes live, we want to, of course, remind you to keep sending your votes on Twitter for the team that you think will win. Use the hashtag SSWWin or EDGWin. Send those to at LOL Esports. And, of course, we'll be checking in as this game gets underway. Samsung White versus Edward Gaming. Samsung White being perfect so far, at least in results. I'm sure we can pick out a couple of little things that they will have want to avoid going further into the tournament. Well, Edward Gaming with that surprise loss earlier on to local heroes by now, certainly AHQ, have to win here to avoid a tiebreaker game for that second quarter final spot. Yeah, I think it's pretty interesting how both of these teams come out with kind of compositions that we did expect from them. EDG, as he said, they're all about the counterattack, and they talk about how aggressive Samsung White is, and they want to stick with the same strategy here, uh, they said, and, you know, try and capitalize on the move that Samsung White is going to make on them early. Samsung White, they've got all this dive. Jarvan, Maokai, Fizz, all going to be looking for Name to take him out. We'll see if they can keep their cool and if FCZF can keep him safe. Well, we have a pause coming in. First one of the tournament. Yeah, I mean, I love our new pause screen, but at this stage, <laughs> <laughs> there's not much going on on it. Apart from the early items, which, well, there's not much special to uh, to really look at. So at least you get time to see the, the standard start in terms of items here for these players. Apparently there's a slight audio issue here with Pawn, so uh, I'll just be making sure that that gets sorted out before we get into this game. But... EDG, how's the reaction going to be to them losing to mm -hmm. AHQ, a team which no one thought they were going to lose to? Absolutely, I, and if they lose this game, which is probably the expected result, yeah. they immediately have to play after this in a tiebreaker versus AHQ. And that's two huge games, right? I mean, yeah. where do you focus your energy in this? Because, I mean, you've only got a certain amount of time to prefer, prepare for AHQ. They'll have obviously... Well, I say they'll have obviously done their research for Samsung White. However, they publicly came out and said, we're not focusing on Samsung White. We're focusing on the other teams because we just want to get through into the quarterfinals. And that plan has kind of come unstuck now. You can never underestimate teams in group phase. They can always pull off one match, one upset. And today, well, we've already had two since we've been at the desk, and you could argue yeah. there was a couple this morning as well. Can we see EDG upset Samsung White and ruin their perfect group stage? Yeah, well, one thing at a time for them. They definitely got to focus right <laughs> here, right now on this game. Expand on that mid-game vision control that they know is going to be important here. Try and keep this early Jarvan pressure uh, to a minimum. Try and control him because Dandy, he's got the opportunity to really upset the top lane balance here. Maokai's great at setting up ganks, and with Jarvan having a gap closer of his own, early on, Ryze is very vulnerable. So it's either the top or the bottom lanes very likely here for EDG that could be under fire early. Need to keep their cool. As usual, we know Imp and Mata not going to shy away from a two versus two opportunity. Twitch plus the Janna at his back will give him the confidence. FCZF right in his face though, ready to trade. No messing around really straight in there. The support having to go at one another. Imp lost a bit of health as well. And a very interesting problem. Two of the biggest AD carry names around with the biggest amounts of hype on them, I think, coming into this tournament. And obviously there are a few over in Group C and D as well, but Imp and Nami, two huge names in AD carry role in the League of Legends. Plus, since we're look, looking at the bottom lane here, both junglers start on their red side, so they will end their routes near the bottom. Whoever's pushing up has to worry about the three-minute double buff gank. Uh, a lot of the trinket wards might be saved for the side bushes if they're going to be trading this often. Looks like Mata's thinking about warding this river. Dandy does go up here and add some. Ward down in there and making sure that they have vision of Khalil of who, funnily enough, against AHQ, we saw him crossing that river three, four, five, six times and stealing away 
Brave Camps obviously went down early on, being caught out in that scenario, as he also did against Dark Passage earlier on here in the group stages. But for now, it was Samsung White that pushed this bottom oh. lane out, and they're going to go for a recall three and a half minutes in. Is this going to be a lane switch? It's got to be. They're going back early. No, they're going to return. The roaming Mata, yes. at least, he's heading up. Now, oh, just no. a fake out. He wanted Juki D man. He's running a circle around well, the Nexus. They did just ram that wave right onto EDG, quickly back, get themselves that slight advantage. You can see the longsword being picked up, along with a uh, probably a couple more pots for Imp. Mata himself also picking up a chunk of wards as well. So, hmm. Interesting. Yeah, we're well, going to have to keep this in mind because remember the last game between White and EDG? Uh, Samsung White, they focused up on the top lane. And, uh, ooh, now we have some focus here from Clear Love. He doesn't want to let the same thing happen again. Doesn't look like Looper's going to overextend himself, though. He doesn't have much of a reason. So, last time, White and EDG. White's plan, they focused up top lane with Dan. And he decided, we're not going to give. Um, we're not going to care about Dragon at all. So he goes up there. They trade Dragon for the first blood. They get Looper on this rumble. At, ooh, never mind. He shoved out again. Kha'Zix is recalling. Okay, so they shoved out. Uh, last time they focused on the top lane. They got the rumble ahead, and they gave up the Dragon. They didn't care about the early Dragon. Instead, White invested in their top laner, which it focuses gold on their top lane side and their jungler. Meanwhile, it spreads out the gold for EDG in that trade. Samsung White, they're all about what's going to happen further down the line, the consequences later of the trades that they make. So Dandy then repeatedly went up to the top side of the map and was able to snowball this rumble, which, uh, which turned into a huge team fight presence for them. And they were able to win every single consecutive team fight because of this fed rumble up top. And they didn't have to give up any more dragons. This time around, though, he's hard farming. And Clear Love is trying to make good on his promise to help out his way, uh, his laners. Tried to go top. Now he's hovering mid. Will he get an opportunity there? That seems to be the problem for this one. Looper was pushed back onto his turret. Pawn got the mobility really to dodge around as we are going to see Name going for Imp and actually Marta is completely out of position there. We're just putting a ward down on the top side and EDG trying to be aggressive mm. on that bottom side of the map. We did see Name go back home by the way after the initial uh, recall from Imp and got the workings off his phage. That was a pink ward they were trying to protect there. Imp, uh, sorry, Matter had been around and put that pink ward in that bush and that is now gone. That's why they were being so aggressive, so yep. protective. But EDG, they did a similar thing. They went back and they got themselves the Ruby Crystals along with that long sword. But the deep vision is there for Samson White. They are very much covered. They're happy to sit back this far. Don't think they're going to be happy about that pink ward going, though. Dandy's coming around, though. They're shoved up. He should be able to get position on this fairly easily. It would have to be a setup from Mata to get a good knockup, though. They want to clear out this wave first, so when you're a jungler, it's easy to gank lanes that are pushed up because the position of your enemies is uh, exposed, but the giant minion wave is hard to fight through. You don't want to fight through the extra damage of the minion wave, so they're waiting to clear it out. Then he went for it just as that ward uh, timed out, and he got seen. Ooh. Playful tricksters out of the void spikes, pawn getting a little poke keeping Clear Love away. Does, of course, force Dandy as well, away as well, because that ward spotted him by EDG in the river. And that means that Imp and Mana are pushed up on their tower right now, feeling pretty comfortable, though. Looper coming around. Perfect timing. Red buff spawns. Gets himself the ward on there, and Clear Love is coming straight for it. Yeah. I mean, he's got the ward down, so they'll have the intel, and they'll have the timer for it. But because they're handing off blue, there's no aggressive move here from White. They're going to continue on with their fairly passive play here in the early game. Definitely a passive start to it. Seven and a half minutes in, no first blood. The gold staying even. If you look across the lanes and even into the jungle, things are very, very close at this point. Nami is going to step forward here. He's getting knocked up, so really just an exchange in that bottom side between the two teams. Yeah, it looks like he wants a trade. Yeah, it looks like he wants to have a bit of a go here at Nami, but again, just stealthing in, not able to get too much from it. We did have Dandy on the bottom side, obviously, as the uh, bottom side 
camps did respawn, so he'll be able to come down with this red buff. Clear Love, of course, will be in a similar position, so this could get interesting down bottom. Good lane uh, ward here in the bush, too, by EDG, so that a lane gank... Ooh, that gives away that they have a ward in there, though. You can see the pings on that bush now. Now they know that there's a ward because they went for the harass. Oh! He's done. He's going to try and swing around the side. Well, Impas hit level six. He could try and get Ratatat Tat on Dive the range. He already used it on Taname. Clear Love needs to get here now. He's headed down. Instead, they're going to turn around. They try to head off you there, force him away so he can't toss that Mega Inferno bomb all the way down to the bottom. Clear Love is heading down south. We are going to see the two junglers meet if they go in there, but now Koro being dived on by Lupa. Yeah, good damage back though from Koro onto Lupa. Takes about a quarter of his health away, and Koro should be able to stay decently safe on that top side. I don't see Lupa just one on one in there underneath his own turret. That would be pretty disastrous in a game like this for EDG. Actually, Koro going for the Catalyst first rather than the tier. Yeah, I mean, uh, you got to give props to Looper. He's doing very well with Mal Mal Guy is by no means a lane bully. And he's shoving Koro into his turret repeatedly here. As you said, though, Koro not going for the early tier, going for the early catalyst. That's even a sort of defensive buy there for Ryze. Defensive Whoa. start. Pawn heading north. Spotted by the pink ward, though. They know he's coming. There's another pink ward in that bush. They've passed two pink wards, and that's buying time. Dive and Dragon at the same time? Dive and Dragon at the same time. They've drawn the attention. They know they've done it, and they still get the first blood. How the hell And did the that Dragon? Happen? What a call. White, please. Oh, my goodness. They're going to get both of these here. Clear Love just sitting wow. in his top side jungle while White take everything from them. Zero reactions from EDG. Well, would you expect that? No, probably not. You see your mid, the mid laner going top. They saw him very early as well because of that pink ward outside of the red yeah. buff. And they let it happen. As we said, Ryze is vulnerable to dives very early on. This is his mana stage, the mana growing stage for Ryze. Very weak. I mean, Looper's been doing a great job in that lane, but shoves him all the way up to the turret and the easy dive there for Pawn. Beautiful start here for White. Showing once again why many have them down as the big favorites for the 2014 World Championship. And that puts them ahead here in gold. That, it's got to cause some problems too for EDG. I mean, they were already feeling under pressure. They already knew that last time they wanted more pressure from Clear Love for the lanes. And for the, t the top to go down like that to a dive after he went through a pink ward and to lose an objective at the same time, Disastrous. So, not only has... Oh, hello. Luke <laughs> Flash. Wanted to get a twisted advance on towards Koro there, who didn't have Flash of his own. He'd already used it a moment ago. They're not infallible. They do make mistakes. <laughs> it is possible. But at the moment, it's Samsung White on the push. They're going to Name. They get the exhaust down. The Howling Gale doesn't quite catch on towards them. And now they counter it with a wave. Him turns back around and runs back in. So they canceled Horn the teleport coming as well. They canceled the teleport, mm. I think, a split second before Name even flashed. So they called that play off. ADG could see why they were going so aggressive, though. There is a... Oh, oh dear. Oh, Nami going to be focused there. He's Dandy oh, diving in. Nami in all kinds of trouble here. He will fall. Dandy picks up that kill. Not got enough to kill off FCDF, I don't think. Clear Love had started to move down as well. That will be kill number two. Imp, of course, did survive that too. And that's why you pick Jarvan instead of Lee Sin uh, against Kogma. No flash. He's going nowhere. He's dead. Lee Sin could do the kick back, but it's a bit harder to pull off. Dandy does not have to blow flash or anything to just to pull off a cataclysm. Very easy uh -oh. kill there. It Fun did sort die. of cost them their teleport, though. Yeah, they just cleared the ping ward out. Lupa, remember, did just use his flash, but they are closing in on this top. Red buff has spawned. Danny's going to possibly steal that one away. Pawn and Lupa, though, they're going in for round two. This time around, Koro, he's sprinting. He's out of there. Oh, use for that one. They're going to look for this red. This all stems from that one that they had there before as Clear Love did get his Five own red buff. Five members up in the top half of the jungle right now for Samsung White. They are going to step away, but this is... 
desperately slipping out of control by EDG already. Gotta say, Samsung White have not made a false move yet. Very, very impressive coming out here. I'd say I'd go even step further than that and say they've done more than everything right that they expected. <laughs> more than, the dive yeah. to the top lane and taking Dragon at exactly the same time. Brilliantly well, done. They're going to get the tower here as well. This will be the first one of the game. And they've already got the entire red side jungle littered with wards. They know where Clear Love is going to be uh, by process of elimination. If he's not up on top side, they know he's bottom side. He's definitely not in their own jungle. They have the defensive pink boards. They have control of mid as well as top. But I'm about to go down now. Could see a collapse here. We have both Clear Love and Dandy on that bottom river side, but there's a recall from both Dandy and Pawn. Dandy actually will cancel his there <laughs> as the mines come on top of him. I'm not sure if they've actually seen Clear Love in that rush. I don't know if there is a ward. There is a ward, so they've seen Clear Love. Matt's just trying to bait it. <laughs> a little bit obvious there, I think. <laughs> that's one way to bait it, that's for sure. Get that taunt out on him. And it's going to mean that EDG will back away and Clear Love once again. Found wanting, trying to make a play, and it's just not working out for him because Samsung White are counteracting everything he does. That all being said, you know, all these great moves from, from White. They are not, the gold lead right now is not something that EDG haven't dealt with in the past. This has been the story for EDG. Yes. They knew that White were going to make aggressive moves early. They said they were going to stick to their style. They're not going to falter. And they will Ooh. play towards the, uh-oh. Oh, oh, you're in, in trouble. In team fights. Dandy and Pawn closing the gap. They're oh, going in man. towards Koro, and he's got nowhere to go. He's got teleport. Can he get away from this one in time? Well, it's Flash the Fish, but where are you going to go? He turns around the damage towards Dandy, who will go fairly low, but Pawn gets in there. And it's an easy finisher, to be honest. Meanwhile, Looper in the mid lane did take some damage from three members of Edward Gaming, but not enough. And that is three kills without an answer for Samsung White. And look at this. 30 seconds for Dragon. White have shifted all of their vision down by the Dragon Pit. Blue side's fully warded up. They've got plenty of vision down here, prepped and ready to go. They're shoving the top side. They have pressure up there. Pawn can easily come back down or just stay up there and take the turret. Looks like he's going to clear it out and head down for the Dragon. He may even come around the backside of you. He's got no vision up in towards that top half. White has got everything covered off. And at the moment, they have full control. They're closing in on this bottom half of the map. All right, there is a bright spot for EDG. Since they have focused on this bottom lane, Name, he's got his Trinity Force. Big boost for Kogma. The only problem is, Imp has also just finished his Blade of the Ruin King. So he's going to be quite a viable threat as well. There they are, they collapsed for that dragon. As we said, it was already prepped. Yeah, they'll just give this one up. No reason to risk losing more than just that dragon. And funnily enough, they had a bit of an opening in the fact that Looper's teleport has just now come off cooldown. He was walking from the base towards that dragon. Yep, whilst Koro did have his teleport available. And actually, Looper since then has gone up top and just in time to soak up the wave that Koro had pushed right back A lot of people head him. mid here. Yeah, they're pushing on on Pawn. They want to try and make a player towards him. He's still got that playful trickster available. He's just going to turn it around in there. Clear up going down. In comes Dandy. Pawn gets the kill. He's going to run away from this one. Megan Inferno Bob will find his target at EGG. Finally, get themselves a kill on the board. Yeah, they exchange kills in a two versus three. White are able to, to take down Clear Love, and now Looper's coming in from the backside. It looks like they won't be able to do much with the control that they have over uh, mid, though. So the extra person here for White, not going to be that big of a deal. Uh, both junglers, pretty even trade. Man, look at that vision coverage, though. It's not just blue side now. They've got everything. All of EDG's base are belong to white. And him moving forward. Ah, there's a big ward in that brush, though. 
and that will get him spotted out. So he is trying to fight back here, and you just I, I feel like you can't sit back and let Samsung White make Red buff move. timer can't let them move in there yep. and just strangle you out of the game again. We're going to see them moving in for this red buff for the second time in a row. He managed to close it out last time. Smite fight not even close. Clearly didn't get around there. Didn't have it available. While this is all happening, Pawn's getting free reign on the bottom. There's you looking to try and throw anything out, but he hasn't got Mega Inferno Bomb available. And it's another tower for Samsung. Pawn has 180 plus CS, two kills already. 18 minutes in, this Fizz is ridiculous. Lich Bane on top of Needlessly Large Rod. Yeah, against the Ziggs in lane as well. Yeah. You not able to really bully him away. You can see him there trying to get on, but EDG a little too slow. Samsung White already out of there. Are they going to make a move? The blue buff has since spawned in, and now they're going to try and take that away. So not only have they got all the vision inside of EDG, oh. EDG's jungle, they're Both taking away oh those God. buffs as well. And there is a dive into the top of them, and their first kill coming straight down. Dandy will lock up clear up inside of the Cataclysm. It will give Impa kill. They're going to take down oh. Dame as well. This is a whitewash. It's a massacre. That was all escalated so quickly. Samsung White just coming around the side. Imps on you. He wants another. He gets another. It is 8-1 now, and Samsung White are in full domination mode. That video package, <laughs> the pros were not lying. White are the real deal. This is not even close. Oh, oh he's got him. No, uh, Jen, is there there shield? shield. There it is. Yeah. It, holy mo it was close. Groans coming out from the crowd. They just want to see <laughs> White bleed in some way. They want to see some crack in the I armor. I think that was the, the Chinese broadcasters next oh, to us. They were, okay. they were really excited about that Ignite going down, but didn't quite like it. Let's have a look at that fight again. Again, just going so well for White. Coral, look at him bouncing up and down there. He doesn't even hit the floor before he's dead. Then it's a four versus five. Fizz is next to Name. Dandy locks in clear love. Oh, Name versus Imp, it's a one-on-one, -on -one, but it's gonna be Name oh, going oh. down! Can he get away White from this one? Oh. Takes tower hits, doesn't matter. He's, I think he realized he was going down there. He yeah, did, he did have flash, but he didn't want to waste it. He was farming some... It's a kill for EDG! Yeah. There, there, there you go, there you go. All right, kill for EDG, plus it was a Name kill. So that's something there. They definitely want as much money on him as they can get. Oh. Actually on wards there, two of them placed right on top of each other. Oh, they're getting collapsed on. Why are they going to come around? Oh, he flashes in towards Mata, the bomb as well. We'll catch out Dandy, who's trying to dodge around, but we'll get over the back there of that Baron wall. We do have Pawn moving in from the Tribush as well. Meanwhile, oh, wow. Looper, they're going to trade a kill for the middle outer turret. Well, there's the crack in the armor. They got a couple kills. Still bleeding objectives, though. Another turret goes down. Outer rings no more. Samson White, got to be honest, all of that seemed to me that Imp was just like, you know what, I fancy a one-on-one. -on -one. I want to <laughs> see how this Chinese number one super later <laughs> AD carry is. And it actually went even, so we'll see how it continues. Uh -oh. The possibility is Koro this time finds himself a fizz in the top lane. Playful tricks, the urgent strike available. Blast him away, but it's all about the tower diving now. And Samsung White, they're just having some fun around the map. See them once again inside of the EDG jungle, getting those wards in and getting rid of everything that the Chinese side have just been putting back in. Meanwhile, Pawn. Actually, Koro. Went decently toe to toe with him underneath that tower. Obviously, the tower itself helping out a little bit with the roofers. But if you look down, Pawn Zonya's into the Lich Bane as well. He's hurting, that's for sure. We also have him who now Jeez. has his Ghost Blade on top of his Blade of the Ruin King. That 1v1 will be a little less even next time. One thing's for sure Loco Doco has his work cut out, taking notes on Samsung White. They've played a plethora of champions throughout the entire group phase, really proving that they can play absolutely anything and any style of tactic, and it seemingly work. I don't know how you really read into what they do on the map right now. That's really why TSM looks so devastated when they lost that game to SK, because nobody wants to ha 
wants to play Samsung White. The further you can delay meeting up with White, the further you can go in the tournament. <laughs> Oh, him. Look at this, he's oh, going to go wow. straight in on towards FCZF. That is going to be the first one for him. Oh, Actually, it's not closer to clear love there. A lot of damage from you. The oh. bomb, wrong direction. Yeah, wrong guess. Tried to blind shot that one. Him taken low here. Now, he's going to try and sneak around the side. Samsung White still in full force. So there's five members here. EDG got to be careful. They don't rush into this one. They're going to turn oh. up. Now Mana comes around the side. Dandy's just doing all of the damage. In goes Port. Slides on through. And now Koro's going to go down. He's been pulled in. Port gets a second. And just like that, Samsung White get themselves another hat full of kills. Let's just give a nice little golf clap there to Dandy for the EQ flash to extend and hit the knockup. Beautiful, beautiful play. Ho. Oh. 24 minute Baron, right on time. Or will Clear Love get in here with something to say about it? He's got flash. Nope. Nope. Not going for it. And, well, Samsung White extending their lead. They're touching on a 10,000 gold lead at this point. Both dragons. That single Baron. And now they're going to extend the strangulation that they've been putting onto EDG. Actually, good damage here coming out from you. Will for Samsung White to just back off. They're looking for an another buff. Dandy, less than half healthy. They might be able to do something. Tidal Wave going to come across. Dandy will be focused. A good bubble lens onto Looper as well. This should be two kills for Samsung White. Impa stealthed up and gone away. <laughs> for two EDG. kills for EDG, <laughs> sorry. It was off the side, sizing that one up. He's like, well, I've got my ultimate. I'm not sure I can take them yet, though. And that is Edward Gaming picking themselves up two kills and a dragon. And this is a p problem. Sometimes with Samsung. There it is. They get a little over EQ flash, double the knockup, double the kills right here. We all know the outcome of this one. Yeah. But really, why don't we go back to what just happened here for EDG? Because they just got not only the two kills, but perfect timing for Dragon. So they cleaned up some experience, some catch up experience. You get the bonus there since they're out leveled right now. And a nice bit of pocket change. Oh. Imp is going wandering again on the hunt. Oh, he's just he's going for you. Yeah. He's found he's you. Gonna get him, is he? Well, surely underneath the tower, oh, flashes no. in for it, and you will be able to walk away. Use everything, barrier flash, to stay alive, and that is the wave clear basically gone there for EDG, and it means the inner tower. Yeah, just like that. Talked about how he wasn't the assassin before. Absolutely, is this time around. Of course, with that. Blade of the Rune King and Ghost Blade. He is hunting for targets, finds one, pushes a tower. Samsung White in full control once again. They are just going to turn the screws, push towards that top lane. Luke are going to get himself a gigantic wave and look at the ward placement. Samsung White have coverage yeah. everywhere right now. Let's. I wonder how far back we'd have to go to see White having to oh actually dear. place a ward on their own side. Ooh, that's good. Yeah. yeah. They might want to try and catch something here. Jarvan coming around. Nope. Only three members. Don't feel like the 3v5 quite yet. I feel like Dandy's putting a good case forward for more Jarvan as well in the World Championships here. <laughs> I mean, Dandy so far, I mean, if you look at his statistics from, from OGN in the playoffs, I mean, not exactly a big Jarvan player. In fact, didn't play nope. throughout that in the playoffs at all. So you might have expected maybe more Nocturne to appear, the likes of those kind of champions, but really showing that, well, if you've, if you've got the skills with Jarvan, he can be an absolute beast. I mean, so, nine assists right now out of 12 kills. Yeah, so it's either just trying to show that he's he can play anything really, yeah. really well, or it's because of this Kog'Maw pick and because yeah. Name is their focus. So there's definitely good reasons for him to pick it this time around, uh, just because it is so good at keeping Name in one spot for the rest of the team to annihilate. But yeah, what man. What are EDG doing? They're not reacting. This one. They know they've got a Zeke so they can clear the wave. Finally, they're pushing back from that bottom wave. But Samsung White have grouped in five members. They're pushing straight through. There goes Chop the Water as they jump onto you, and he goes down instantly. Dandy's forced away. They cut off to the side. Rat-a-tat-tat -tat, rips on through. Clear them. They're
That's another one down. They clutch on towards Nami. He drops. MCZ have the next focus. Koro gets caught out. There's the ultimate from Mana. Saves the day. And it's an ace for Samsung White deep in the base of Edward Gaming. This is just beautiful to watch. Pawn goes so deep in there. The last part of Playful Trickster, he flashes to extend the damage as well. Just putting on a show, these guys. A little bit early in the game to actually finish said game, though. 30 minutes in, well, not even 28 minutes in, and those spawn time is still short enough that EDG will be able to come back out and defend what is left of their base. Losing, of course, the first inhibitor now. I posed the question before we started this one, how much is that defeat to AHQ playing on the minds of EDG? Uh -huh. How much is that mentality that EDG actually had before this tournament saying we're not focusing on white, we're focusing on the other two teams so that we can get out of the group stage and into the quarterfinals? It might be a mixture of the both, but we're going to find out soonish because it looks like Edward Gaming are going to play EDG once again today. Edward Gaming gonna play themselves? Mate! Uh -oh. <laughs> gotcha back! <laughs> AHQ looks like they will have a match ahead of them though. It does escape oh, with the his life. They're coming in, here they go! Looper catches on to clear love, FCZF comes in, here comes Mata! Howling Gale through the run of them. FCZF locked down and taken out. It's a double for Imp as the rest of EDG flee for their lives. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, they're got a ways to go here, too. White definitely hot on their heels. Yeah, you. I mean, you really do have to worry about if they're demoralized here, EDG, this team, especially after... Uh-oh. Oh, oh Dandy's going in. I think he's taking <laughs> a little bit too much there, but Guardian Angel uh -huh. on him. Bomb comes back. Meanwhile, Pawn has dove in from the backside. Yes, the fish on you. Dandy joins in. He's going to come out of the Zonyas. Don't think he can quite oh. take Koro, though. He will pick himself up one, and, well... That is the shutdown coming in. Nice chunk of gold because one was 914. Meanwhile, Super Minions might just take both Nexus turrets. Not quite. No, it's going to be real Got close. It. Oh, last hit before they take it down. The Nexus is open for the taking. And actually, we did just check in. The last time White had to place a ward even on their side of the map, defensive ward, 16 minutes. From that point on, all wards placed on EDG's side of the map. 1650. Oh, it punches this. Two versus one, no! 2v1, oh. why the hell not? FCZ at first, possibly no. Clear love, he's gonna drop in there. Dodges out of the bubble. There's one! Does he fancy the second? No, he's just gonna back away. Imp styling. Beautiful play right there. All he had to do, dodge the bubble. Well done. And, you know, I made the mistake earlier of uh, Edward Gaming versus EDG. <laughs> but, funnily enough, it might be the case. Uh, if true. that AHQ uh, loss is very, a problem, I'm just turning this one around. Very wise, you. Joe. That is meta of I mean, we, so we heard it earlier, yesterday from Quick Shot where Dark Passage had to beat Dark Passage yeah, to get true. through. true. This time around, it's a different scenario, though. Really? Samsung White are just demolishing them this game. I think you raise a good point there, Joe. More of these league teams should take an introspective view uh, and really look to improve upon themselves. Because the things that they said they wanted to improve upon were the early lane presence from Clearlove and trying to stop the snowball from the very beginning of Samsung White. That play where White got so much vision that they could actually make the call to send their mid lane or top while getting an early dragon is exactly what EDG wanted to avoid. They wanted to have Clear Love try and support the laner so they didn't get ganked and dove early like that. And they wanted to try and stop the early objective bleed. But White are able to pull it off once again. DKM looking for more. Pushing the lanes, and it's about time that Samson White decided to close this game out. They've just picked up the Dragon and the Baron, and now they're going to take the final inner turret. And it's just off at the side there. EDG not going to contest that one. And really, they are pushed deep into their base. The inhibitor in the mid lane has respawned. Looper will clear out that pink ward, and the rest of Samson White will collapse in. Bottom lane being pushed in as well. Edward Gaming realizing this is their last line of defense. 
you got to say, Ozone, White, they came out with a mission. Group stages this time around. They wanted to make a point. Last year, they wanted to wash that away, wash it off their oh, record, they're and they're going to do it right now. Wow. Yeah, this is uh, just a, <laughs> a domination in terms of... Oh, oh, oh there is Pudding. Pudding going in. Zonia's bomb. Ah, oh, my God. <laughs> he got away. What? They need to kill the inhibitor first, though. That respawned a few moments ago. And Pawn literally just playing with his opposition at this stage. They're trying to keep them off the Nexus, but Samsung White going to push through, pick up another victory. It's a perfect group stage here for the favorites. I've got to ask, can anyone stop Samsung White? Group C and D will be next week in Singapore, of course, but it's Team Solo Mid. The first team in their sights as they go 6-0 and in the group stage. This team is looking unstoppable. And boys, we are not done yet. We do nope. get that tiebreaker game. EDG got to stay up there on that stage because AHQ are coming back for more. It's got the makings of a fairy tale story or nightmare if you're an EDG <laughs> fan. I mean, AHQ, a team that honestly are, are so well loved here we heard rumblings that actually ahq are more popular than the taipei assassins in taipei and if they were to do it here on this stage it would be absolutely incredible you, you gotta love their style i mean just focused on kills and picking people apart they're not they're not really about moving around the maps and taking down turrets they're about getting kills, and that's a satisfying League of Legends to watch. Well, it was a fantastic game earlier, AHQ versus e EDG, so I'm only hoping we can match that one because obviously that was a bit of a whitewash, no doubt about it. No pun intended on that one, it's just the, the way it was. But you we guys have really like that term too. You use it all the it's time. A, it's, it's a not standard just English it's phrase, that's for sure, yeah. We'll but we've had, some, the way we've had some amazing games. Tell me how you say nah again. Nah. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. I was like, you said nah, nah. and you're like, nah, nah, nah. <laughs> nah, I didn't say nah. <laughs> That's an American phrase, nah. <laughs> well, we're, you know, crossing <laughs> cultural boundaries here, <laughs> teaching each other each other's languages as we go, and, you know, learning as we get these amazing games. And, well, we got one more here tonight, and it's possibly going to be the one that upsets the tournament because it would be the first giant to fall. It definitely China's would. number one seed. Absolutely. It could be a gigantic upset. We'll see how it works out. We're going to go over towards the analyst desk right now who are ready to break down Samsung White's victory. Thank you very much, guys. And I think, Joe, you hit the nail on the head. You need to look introspectively at your inner shoutcaster. And when mm. inner Joe Miller looks at outer Joe Miller's phrases and learns from inner Kobe's outer Kobe phrases, <laughs> things get gnarly. <laughs> right, let's get serious. Samsung White's expected result, uh, fairly one-sided win. It mm -hmm. felt like there was little to nothing that Edward Gaming could really do in that game. Samsung White just steamrolled him. Yeah, and uh, one thing that I want to highlight here too is the Fizz pick from Pawn. And what's so interesting about this pick is that he, the, he hasn't played it in a while. And back when he had his former ID of One Suck, when he played on MIG Blitz, which was like kind of an amateur up and coming team coached by Wung, he was known as a Fizz main. And I haven't really seen him on it, but he was a god on that champion back then. And so this is yet another pick from Samsung White, and that just sows even more doubt in uh, TSM's mind now. I mean, at the same time, like, they could have kind of picked whatever they wanted at this point. Like, they realized how strongly they beat EDG last time. They realized there's nothing for them to play. They get first place in the group regardless. So... You are right that his face is going to be good, and yeah, okay, he went 10, 1, and 4, but uh, I wonder how much that is just flexing versus actually saying, you know, here's our, here's our champion pool we're going to bring up against someone like Blue or Shield. Or Talking something. about flexing, pull the first replay up onto yeah. your screens. It does really summarize uh, the flow of this game. Freak, you can actually talk us through it. Yeah, so it's basically uh, these guys playing hyper-aggressive over and over just because they can. I go ahead and roll the clip out. It's basically Samsung White saying, hey, we can take a group. I love this Mata Tornado, by the way. Channels it from behind the wall in Fog of War. Then everyone just kind of dives in together. It is a very coordinated team, but this is now a team with a giant gold lead. And they're just going to simply walk forward at you. Uh, you've got really good individual duels here as well. Imp goes crazy, of course. He even gets a clean up a kill at the end of it all. But it just shows you the team fight prowess. Pawn gets away. Unfortunately, a slight miss by you here to not track him either. 
I and think then, Imp yeah. gets one more. Yep, Imp, Imp chases someone down, right? They even keep track of where the retreats go. And then Sponge walks away. Yeah, just a gorgeous fight, too. If you look at... Oh, there are so many knockups on the composition of Samsung White, and it's one of those CCs that can't be uh, lowered by tenacity. And when they chain them together so well, when you have the Tornado, you have the Jarvan knockup, you have the Fizz knockup, and they all come in, boom, 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 right after one after another... It, it's almost impossible to win a team fight in a choke like that. Yeah, I completely agree. We do have another replay. Uh, this is one that really impressed Crumbs, and it's one that's going to strike fear into the hearts of every other team that faces off against Samsung White. Crumbs, tell us why. This one is ridiculous. You know, when you see a Korean team, they tell you, oh, you know, they're mechanically, they, we're just, just as good as the rest of the world. But when you put that mechanical skill and it's in harmony with each other, the kind of thing that you're about to see is what happens. So roll the clip out and Crumbs talk us through what really impresses you. Beast goes in, dies with the flash E, Jarvan follows up from like miles away and then the entire team just takes over. Like they take a 5 for 0 ace in here. They're coordinated with their cooldowns with the Maokai W and the E flash so that every time it's not just one going in, they have multiple people following them up. And the right there, Janna flashes in to save Biz from the tower shot with the heal. You, you can't match this kind of level. It's artsy. That's what it looks like. Yeah, and you know, actually, uh, speaking of that whole team and, and Mata especially being incredible, uh, Crepo, I do just want to say that Mata's first <laughs> completed item after Sight Stone was Frost Queen's claim. Yeah, I'm on your side, but <laughs> you know why? You don't need a defensive item. If you're winning in 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good point. Right, with that win, what it does mean is that Samsung White guarantee, obviously, the first place seed in the group. We know with TSM losing to SK. Our first quarterfinal is 100% guaranteed and locked in. Samsung White will be taking on Team Solo Mid in Busan, Korea. That will be a best of five. Three it's matches. Three matches? Are you calling it that, <laughs> that much? I mean, I mean, let's face it. The long it. time between now and then for TSM. Yeah, White's just been looking so good, though. I don't know, I don't know what TSM can even fix. In, they have to, like two weeks time maybe, but even then the difference is just so, so big. I'm going to make a bet that I made to you guys in the caster desk previously, which was that if White is to lose to whoever, it was to whoever they would play. So now that they play TSM, I should say TSM. If they were to lose to TSM, I will boil my shoe, make a shoe soup, and eat it in front of you guys because I am so confident somebody, this is not happening. Somebody write that down. Shut it down and record it. Rose tinted glasses? Uh, yeah, you know what? You willing to take the kind of same bet with me? Uh, no. Oh, come on. You don't have, you don't have as much faith? Uh, uh no. All right. I, I, will, I will share a, su a shoe uh, soup yeah, with you. Right. I, I, will, I will say that if TSM uh, beats Samsung White, I will eat an apple pie. <laughs> I hold I in the one sitting. Well, right. I, yeah. mean, I mean, for me, like, coming in here, like, it, you know, I think it's going to be a 3-1. Oh. Oh, damn it. Um, 3-0. No <laughs> chance. Damn it. Well, <laughs> sorry, I don't know how those things get on my face sometimes. <laughs> you put them there. That's how. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> the other consequences of this game is, of course, that with EDG's loss, we do have that second seed tiebreaker match with AHQ coming up in a moment or two while the teams are getting ready. I believe there's a coin toss f to determine who's going to get which side. How broken is Edward Gaming's mentality? This is a question that we were discussing while the game was going on. In your mind, Crumbs, how bad is it in the EDG camp? When thinking about which which team would come out ahead in the EDG versus uh, AHQ matchup, I thought, okay, they lost one game already and the crowd was really behind the AHQ. This second game is going to be determined as to how badly are they going to lose to Samsung White and how much is that going to translate into the next match and with the crowd behind AHQ their morale is down I mean you you have to like there's no way somebody's that resilient to not be able to to completely step away from these games like these Monty anything to add uh, I I just think it's you know, it's a really interesting matchup, and when we talk about EDG, you know, we called this group the David and Goliath group. We expected EDG to do better, but EDG has just not been not performing. Like, I'm at this point wondering, is this the Samsung Ozone of this year, the team that comes in with a lot of expectations and then completely chokes in the group stage? Well, again, keep in mind, like, we, when we stack rank the teams, I know we, we like to think of EDG as this very strong Chinese team, but again, they had the same regular season record as Sam, as Royal Club. Exact same record actually was down to them 1-3 in the head-to-head. -head. So it's like they're not heads and shoulders against these other Chinese teams. And, and again, we look at Royal Club like, yeah, they're pretty good, but we didn't think they had a chance against Samsung White either. So I don't think you can say Edward are necessarily actually that incredibly strong. At the same time, though, they were very much a victim of their own composition last time. They played a slow uh, pull comp and they just didn't respect their power spikes. I think if they just go for a more 
meta game composition, their their strengths will shine through, and they should be able to beat HQ. Yeah, I kind of share the same opinion. I actually just want to update everybody and take a look at the standings graphic really quickly for both of these groups A and B, which are drawing nearer to being completed. Group A, of course, Samsung White six and zero, and there's the tie. AHQ and Edward Gaming three and three, and because they split their head to head one and one, that is why we're going to be having that tiebreaker match. The other side, you do have Starhorn Royal Club, who in my mind, have looked better than Edward Gaming in arguably a more competitive group. Um, you know, you can put that to the test however you like. But uh, it, it's interesting to see how these two Chinese squads have fared in the opening four days of Worlds. Yeah, initially we all had the notion that whoever comes out of Group A is going to smash and crush mm -hmm. whoever makes it out of Group B. But this is definitely the one match that could have been close, which is why I think TSM is going to be really sad that they didn't get a chance to get that number one seed because... Playing against number two seed in Group A actually gives you a chance to get out. White, on the other hand, looks so, so strong. Yeah, and it, it's really interesting as well. Like, you think about the SK story, how unfortunate Svenskeren's actions were because they, once Svenskeren was able to play with the lineup, they beat TSM and they beat TPA, whereas they lost to them when it was Gilius playing. And it's like all the SK fans are like, you know, I'm really sorry you did that because you, you ruined one of the European hopes to get in the quarters. Yeah, that's definitely the truth. Crepe, final thoughts before we move on? I've actually made all my thoughts already. Thank you, though, for giving well, me Well, guys, <laughs> we do have that tiebreaker coming up between Edward Gaming and AHQ Esports to see who will be advancing to the quarterfinals where they will face off against Starhorn World Club. And we're actually going to see the coin toss to determine who will get the side they want. It is West Oil representing AHQ and Edward Gaming's manager representing his team. So that is uh, one of the referees, Tizza, just explained the rules to both of the squads as we're about to see the magical coin toss and happen. Antenna. We'll get there. I Look, come on, he's JT, he's flicked it. All right, this is not a catch and flip style. I don't know if the camera can zoom that far. EDG actually have one, and they will be selecting. I think that was blue side, if I read uh, JT's lips correctly. So it is blue side, guys. We will be bringing you that match after this short break. Coming straight down, Dandy will lock up clear up inside of the Cataclysm. And they're going to turn oh. up now instead. Mana comes around the side. Dandy's just doing all of the damage. In goes Pop, slides on through. Here they go. Looper catches on to clear up. FCZF comes in. Here comes Mana. Howling Gale through the run of them. FCZF locked down and taken out. It's a double for him. Dandy's forced away. They cut off to the side. Ratatat rips on through. Clear up. That's another one down. They cut off towards Nava. He's up. 